uh, the office is a part, uh, it partly represents uh, one of the possible researches in uh, professional spaces in Italy about uh, con contemporary architecture and, and territory. Uh, we decided as an office to name it as an office for architecture and territor territory transformation because uh, the idea was to uh, think architecture like a part of a territory <coughs> and not like uh, a sort of autoreferential firm. So the object, the architect, the building, not like uh, just uh, and not product by ourselves, but sort of uh, object able to create relationship with uh, social, cultural, uh, and all the economic topics surrounding the uh, territory. They are my associate, I'm glad to work with. And I run into the conference <laughs> to the lecture of today. So, uh, try to change uh, our point of view on uh, architecture when we decided to open the office, uh, like uh, I'm just telling right now. So, looking at the world to produce innovation, and every time is almost the first time, because uh, like uh, in a law of relation, uh, you the relationship between uh, the architectural design, the design and the site, the place where you are going to intervene, is always a strange relationship you have to build up every time from the beginning. Uh, now I'm going to express better my uh, uh, idea. Um, this last, uh, this last project I'm going to show you reflects a lot about the rela relationship between the globalization and the site-specific design. Because uh, uh, you are going to uh, to degree, to a bachelor, or to a master, and <coughs> our, uh, your new condition and our condition is very different from the condition of uh, the last generation of architects, because uh, you are completely with, uh, within the globalization, and maybe you can have your first project here in Iowa or in the US, and maybe the second chair uh, can arrive from all over the world, because uh, you are able to, we are able to promote our projects to the social networks, through the web, uh, through the new way of communication, so we are immediately global. But at the same time, when we are going to work, uh, maybe we are going to work inside like this. Because uh, maybe if you are going to work in Iran, or in Italy, or in Greece, uh, or in Far uh, East, maybe you are going to work uh, in a very uh, special site, special territories, uh, and, well, every site has a territory is special. So we are global, but at the same time, uh, that the site anyway. And so, like in the movie, yes, who's coming to dinner, every time <laughs> we have to set up a new love relation with, uh, with the site, we are going to the front of, so we are going to intervene. And it means also uh, shock, uh, a, a, a shock about culture, <coughs> Uh, things uh, about uh, way of thinking, about way of uh, create uh, clients, way of uh, product architecture and construct architecture. So uh, every time we have to set up our mind, uh, we are able to, to shift in new, in new places. And this is also a new condition starting from the modern roots uh, starting from uh, Le Corbusier to imagine the idea of Tabla Rasa, it is one of the bases of uh, 
avant-garde modern uh, architecture in the uh, 20th century. For instance, uh, uh, I put this slide from the proposal of Le Corbusier for New York. Here is New York and create the different views uh, in place of Manhattan. So the idea of a new hygienic uh, city able to bring the modernity in the metropolis, uh, that is the archetype of modernity. So, uh, and this idea of tabula rasa sometimes uh, brings us uh, to this kind of uh, generic, uh, to the idea of a generic city. So, at the same time, uh, all the last uh, 20 years, maybe, are the time of uh, rethinking this idea between uh, contemporary architecture and the sites in the world with different kind of approaches. For instance, uh, this is uh, the Kronokaut installation by Ivan Kulak and uh, his office in 2010 on preservation. So, questioning how we are going to build in the existing city, renewing and transforming the existing city, maybe without consuming new health, new portion of health in the world. Or maybe the installation of Italian pavilion in the Venice Biennale, in the last Biennale, working on the idea of grafting. So, don't not lose the idea of a new and contemporary building within the existing territory, but without erasing the existing territory. So, but what is a territory? What is a site? Sometimes uh, the tracks of a site are not really weak. This is uh, the moot of a Roman foundation in Sahara, of an abandoned city, or maybe uh, it's very uh, powerful. This is Venice, but if you look uh, on the foreground, the building in the foreground is uh, a modern island and a very weak project uh, within uh, the historical center of Venice. So we are going to continue to intervene within the historical and the, uh, the historical city. For instance, this is Rome, the outskirts of Rome, the 70 and 90 uh, city, fronting the park of aqueducts. You see the one of the line of the aqueducts and the second line of aqueducts. And so the site is something strange where we are fronting now like a sort of uh, memory of the <coughs> history, but this is the same image, not from the top, but from uh, the perspective of a man or a woman. And this is one of the lines of the aqueducts. For instance, questioning what the site is. What is it this place? Is it an infrastructure to bring water from the mountains within Rome coming from the past? Is it a sign, a landscape, a landscape sign uh, at the geographic dimension of the territory, or is it a monument coming from the past? So the site speaks as also about disciplines. Maybe it's not an engineer, it's just not an engineer infrastructure, it's just not a landscape design just not an architectural monument. At the same time, this is a very well-known uh, photographer in Europe coming from the 70s, shooting uh, the kids from the suburbs playing football in uh, just under the aqueduct. So, uh, the, uh, the work, uh, of the artists, the worker, of the photographers, of the directors of, from the cinema, <coughs> and transmitted us through the globalization to the web, 
is able to build up another imaginary of the sites, speaking about the sites, but not <coughs> present nowadays in the site itself. For instance, you know where we were Pasolini, maybe, and the movie Mamma Roma, where uh, the aqueduct is the uh, background of the movie itself, uh, with Anna Magnani and the family factors from the 50s and 60s of Rome. Uh, acting in front of the apple. So, maybe uh, the globalization is not just uh, the way to uh, create a homogeneous approach to different parts of the world, but that may be <coughs> useful to transmit the imaginary uh, related to the sites able to empower and to support <coughs> the design within different kinds of sites. Um, now we are going to, I'm going to present our project uh, reflecting on this relationship between how the globalization is able to, trans to transmit the um, uh, imaginary related to sites and how we, use, we can use uh, this imaginary, this uh, shared imagination, shared through uh, our new techniques <coughs> of communication, to create uh, uh, site specific design. And uh, from this point of view, recovering uh, one of the big slogans of Ernesto Nata Rogers in Turkey uh, during the Congress of uh, Modern <coughs> Architecture uh, with uh, CIAM from the spoon to the city. So there was this idea to build up a, a new utopian man and a, a human being through helping with the product design, with the architecture, with the infrastructure, uh, a better condition of life. But maybe no, uh, nowadays, we can imagine this approach uh, apart of uh, the fallen utopias uh, to use uh, uh, the design from the spoon to the city, from the city to the spoon, to enforce the condition and the uniqueness of our sites uh, around the world and take, uh, take care about this at uh, the sites we are going to design around the world. Now I'm going to present some of the uh, projects. Um, I know we are in a college uh, in a faculty of architecture, and maybe I am <coughs> to be an architecture member, but uh, I'm speaking right now about design space uh, and not design landscape, not urban furniture, not product design, but just maybe space. This is a, a public square, square uh, and it was a competition we won in uh, 2013 and we are going to finish the realization in uh, October, so it's almost finished. Um, um, it is in a little city uh, of northern Italy, it's 30,000 inhabitant city with a huge uh, uh, square of 8,000 square meters uh, with a porch all around in the center of the city. And this was the uh, terminal of the Silk Road uh, for Northern Italy. A strange, a very strange place, sort of uh, uh, safe market that was closed during the night to uh, preserve the silk that during the last century was used as a parking. So the public administration decided to uh, ban a competition. This is the square, the inclusive square, with one, two, three, and four squares around the main square of the pavilion. And this, this is the name of this place is pavilion as just in front of the castle of the city. 
So, from, uh, and we were also in the in territory, his name in Italy, uh, Emilia Romagna, where the fog has a strong presence, it's there nine months per year. Um, the, the photographer Luigi Liri helped us to work uh, with this territory. He, uh, the name of this project, uh, he, he was a landscape uh, photographer and he renewed the way to produce uh, uh, photography of uh, landscape by several projects. One of these was uh, Il Profilo delle Nuvole, the profile of the clouds. Speaking, um, speaking about the present uh, of climate condition <coughs> from uh, an aesthetic point of view. And so telling about the presence of humans uh, within uh, the fog through the lights uh, in the night. And this suggestion was uh, used to produce uh, our design of the square itself <coughs> using this uh, <coughs> aesthetic approach to climate condition to create uh, uh, urban furniture at least um, and the supply and the facilities for a uh, public square in order to allow people a citizenship uh, to use uh, this place. Um, at the end uh, the, the square was just a, a little modeling uh, of the ground floor in order to create uh, here, to create uh, benches for to see, and using the light to enforce this uh, this idea of uh, the presence of uh, a woman or man uh, in the uh, using the public square, public space in the form. Uh, this is the plan design with. Two different areas, a garden with trees uh, uh, and an open space on the other side. And we use the history, <coughs> the Cardos and the Cumanos uh, streets from the Roman foundation, <coughs> the paths around the moat of the castle, um, like a sort of uh, ready made uh, to sign and to design the, the foreground uh, pavement. And from this point of view, it, we didn't choose to present the history from a didactic point of view, but uh, to use the history from uh, an aesthetic point of view. And this is uh, one of the images of the construction site with the uh, ten uh, uh, trucks uh, signing the, the paths. Uh, on the asphalt. The asphalt is transparent asphalt uh, allow, allowing us to see uh, the color of the gravel. So just using the material of the, of the earth to underline the history of the place. And then obviously we decided to don't buy benches, uh, lamps and so on, but to proto prototype everything in order to enforce the uh, uniqueness of the site and in order to enforce uh, to create a sort of uh, collapse in between uh, the imaginary related to the site and the real uh, condition of the site. This is one of the models we presented to uh, the constructor to present him uh, how to realize the benches. And there were uh, five uh, pieces of art able to be assembled uh, in order to create different, uh, the different benches. This is one of the images uh, in the factory, uh, the different pieces then assembled uh, in the yard. And then this is the one of the image within for uh, the garden uh, and the other furniture. And so from the other, from one side you can use the space of benches, on the other side you can recognize still 
the image of a void uh, square like the market uh, of the Hudson City Road. Uh, and then the new benches for the life, a sort of a pop-up uh, furniture able to be removable in case of uh, big events. Uh, uh, they used to have the big events in this place, so one of the requests was to realize urban furniture able to be completely removed from there and to have the square completely void. And then the lights also project, uh, prototype and waiting for, uh, for the trees. <coughs> and then the first opening for Christmas that the politician wants to open a square for Christmas, also if the construction site is not finished. So, and then we decided to interrupt the, the, the construction open for Christmas and reopen after Easter because we are in Italy. Uh, um, the, inaugur uh, the opening was a Catholic opening uh, with a prize. Uh, and so uh, there are some images how the, the children uh, use the place. That was one of the, of the image uh, presented in the competition. And this is the, the final image uh, we are going to realize in, uh, now in the end of September we are going to reopen the yard and to place uh, uh, God's spot able to host the trees and to be removable also like the, uh, the other furniture. So that's a sort of a pop-up public space able to be completely removed in order to create the big events. So uh, this is the second project, and it is uh, a building uh, project, it's still a competition. It's a competition we won uh, this summer, and it is uh, the project for um, the extension of the Cultural uh, Institute uh, uh, in Paris. And we decide to build up the extension of the existing buildings, creating two new buildings, starting from a public space defining the architecture. So design an architecture starting from a, a, an urban space. Uh, we are in Paris, we are on the Rive Gauche. This is the Saint Valid, this is the Grand Arche, uh, the Rivoli Garden, and this is the area of our project. The urban block is D1, with these two streets. One is this one. From the street, it's a Passage arrive to the square, then the old buildings with the old garden, then another square, then another passage arriving to the street on the other side. So, in this urban block, there were uh, there are two blind facades uh, where there were in the past two wings that were destroyed in the early. 20th century. And the aim of the uh, foreign ministry was to uh, rebuild the two wings in order to uh, enlarge and extend the, um, the cultural institutes in Paris to have new classrooms for Italian schools, a new uh, spaces for the artists uh, to host. Um, we start to reflect about the organization and the program. Uh, and we decided to study a part of uh, the rules of competition, the map of activities realized in uh, Paris from the Italian Cultural Institute in the last seven years. So uh, how they promoted the culture in France, the Italian culture in France, 
through promoting events about architecture, art, cooking, design, photography, cinema, literature, music, theater, science, and so on. And the request of competition was very clear. Two weeks, a week for uh, courses, and a week for hosting people, both visitors, both artists. And in the middle, uh, the, uh, the old building, so we um, told us try to shift the point of view, try to reflect about what this place needs a part of the request of the competition. So we studied the we studied the activity and we decided to add some functions and possibly some spaces in order to create something really apart and aside from uh, the competition rules. So taking the risk to be inside or outside the competition rules. And this choice uh, luckily <laughs> won. And this king's this diagram uh, became directly the section of our proposal with these uh, systems sort of a foyer connecting the different wings with the existing buildings became the scheme with the wings one, wings two, existing <coughs> building, and a sort of up for, uh, underground foyer connecting the different buildings. <coughs> so we decided to create a, a public space on two levels, a public square uh, on the ground level and an underground foyer able to connect uh, the existing buildings and the functions hosted in the new and the old buildings in, uh, with the idea to create uh, just one entrance able to connect the different functions of the different buildings where every building host uh, separate function. So uh, courses here, uh, classes here, uh, hosting visitors, uh, artists here, the library, uh, the, pub the public library of Italian underground, the buildings, uh, the existing buildings, the diplomatic uh, administration uh, up above, and then the residences all around the system. So don't think the site like a, a sort of place where to place just two new buildings, but think to the site like a sort of space able to be the core of a little city where different buildings uh, are facing uh, each other. And this was the image of this underground space with uh, the main entrance used like an exhibition space arriving to the library, uh, the wing for our offices, and the main auditorium. And this space is uh, stuff like a sort of um, uh, flexible foyer, hosting uh, three activities at the same time, or uh, two activities, or just a, a one big three cultural activity. So something uh, very different uh, from uh, what they were requesting. They were requesting just rooms for, home, for visitors and artists and classroom from, uh, to take money. And we proposed them to work with the new entrance, the new atrium, able to connect the new functions they were requiring. And then the reflection with the space up above the public space merging uh, the French passage with the uh, Italian uh, square, the Italian, the Italian piazza. So the passage, the French passage, arriving to a sort of main public square with the other passage in between uh, the existing buildings and arriving to the other passage, connecting also the old gardens. So, in creating this sort of core, able to be uh, the space in between the different buildings. And this is the neutral facade we decided to represent uh, 
the classroom uh, uh, building just to reflect uh, the existing building and to not have a new sign like architect, like architects to the existing site, but to speak about the existing site to a senior world. And then uh, the design of the square to arrive to the foyer with this uh, stairs able to be used also for uh, activities uh, on open air in uh, uh, the summer. Okay, this is the class of Pasan. And also a sort of contemporary garden as a citizen homage to the French culture, culture but landscape with the vagabond uh, plants uh, colonizing the borders of the building itself. And then it was also a reflection about the indication of the public administration in Paris to amplify the grids of phases in order to uh, refresh uh, the climate condition within uh, the center of Paris. And we, so we used uh, our horizontal garden uh, uh, colonizing and, and also the colonizing of the vertical facade. <coughs> and finally, there was the uh, buildings uh, facing the historical park, uh, historical garden, with this sort of uh, neoclassical mask uh, in a uh, mirror still able to work with the line of the existing building in order to look for a sort of contemporary uh, dialogue with existing buildings. I'm not so happy about this facade because it's a little bit uh, <laughs> monumental. I would like to do not have something like this, but uh, you know, you are in a team and maybe you're not going to design everything. We have seven people working on this project. And maybe you, sometimes you do not agree with everybody, but sometimes in an office, uh, you have to present the idea. And the core of the project was the foyer, the underground space, uh, and the public space on mm, two levels. So this is, was a monumental <laughs> facade <laughs> we had uh, here. And then this, uh, these buildings, uh, and another height able to uh, to see the urban landscape and to perceive <coughs> the different monuments of uh, the landscape of Paris. So it was also a reflection about the relationship between the urban block of Paris and the core of the plot through the public space, but also about the skyline we are going to create with this little tower and the relationship between these buildings with the urban skyline of Paris. This project, uh, in reality, uh, is uh, the second part. Uh, it's like the uh, murderer that cast two times uh, on the place uh, of the uh, murdering, because we realized in 2015, 12, a project for the refurbishment of the old building that is very, it, it was just a charge, this one. Um, it was very funny how we uh, had it because uh, I arrived in Paris for a lecture. We were invited to represent Italy in a congress of young architects. And in the old director invited us. We arrived and there was a new director. So she didn't know about us. <laughs> Hi, what are you doing here? Hi, I'm an architect. Ha, ah, have you found a job here in Paris? Where are you working? Uh, in reality, you have invited us. Ah, 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 sorry, okay. Tomorrow I'll come uh, to, my office, uh, to my office and explain, explain me, please, your work. <laughs> so I went there, explained our work. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. You have to do a work here. And she committed us to realize the refurbishment of the old buildings, that is um, uh, 18th century building. It was the old quarters of uh, Talleyrand, the Ministry of uh, French Revolution. It uh, was uh, a country <coughs> palace, was uh, uh, 
taken by the French revolutionary, cutting hair to the owners, taking the buildings and placing there the Ministry for uh, Foreign Affairs. And the building is a very uh, classic of French building with a colonnade in the front and a colonnade in the, uh, in the back, front in the garden. It, it, it is a sort of passage building where the rooms go from a garden to another garden. So it's passing by rooms that during the use of the last 20 centuries, 20, uh, 20 years, was not recognizable anymore because they fill out the uh, feeling uh, strange uh, stages, trusses uh, with a uh, uh, fixed uh, screen uh, tool to have uh, conferences, to have uh, projection, and so on. So they asked us to remove everything, but at the same time to allow everything. So our proposal of restoring was to Create, recreate the relationship between the garden outside to the sky, the real sky, the sky painted in the walls, and the nature <coughs> reflected in the mirrors, but at the same time working on the systems to create a, a system for theater, for theater, and at the same time create a stage using the restoration techniques in order to create the remote control and just uh, uh, a stage for projection. At the same time, uh, there was the work uh, on the exhibition stages uh, that was high, uh, in uh, strange rooms uh, made by two ovals uh, where they pass uh, big uh, walls uh, to hang on uh, photographies or paintings and so on. We just had to uh, remove everything, restore everything, restore the frescoes, and to, uh, we designed this sort of uh, uh, desk, this sort of uh, furniture. We used to uh, call them the uh, animals, uh, because they were sort of uh, uh, animals referring to the Renaissance animal just uh, living under the columns, but at the same time they were a machinery able to be dissected to parts at the scale of the man, but at the same time at the scale of the columnate by the ancient so by the old uh, animals, able to be dismantled and to be reassembled in order to create different uh, kind of exhibition in order to have different kind of uh, uh, proposal, cultural proposal within the space. And uh, we start with these uh, furniture like animals uh, living into space, made a landscape made by the scenography of the building or the historical building. So thinking to the historical building as a sort of landscape, uh, and not like uh, an interior design uh, or, a, or a product design for furniture. Are you tired? Do you want to stop? Or I <laughs> okay, so the first one was a square, the second one, uh, buildings, third one, urban furniture, third one, uh, temporary public space, installation. So the, comp the competition allowed us to be known uh, to the public. It was a competition, Maxi. The competition was made by Muma and Maxi. It's a program for promoting young architecture. The name is uh, YAP, Young Architect Program. Uh, it was the first edition for Europe. Um, they asked about an, an outdoor installation in the outdoor of Maxi. Maxi is the Museum for Contemporary Art and Architecture in Rome. And we decided to donut, uh, create a, a temporary art installation, but a temporary public space. So uh, the, the name of was Watami. Uh, joking with the name Watamai, from the first name of the puzzles, 
and a sort of strange uh, Far East archipelago, ar archipelago? Yeah. Yeah. archipelago, like in the Curto Maltese comic <coughs> uh, from uh, Google Prat. Um, our reference was uh, to work uh, on the dissected map. It was the invention of an American engraver, John Spielberg, in the 18th century. And he was uh, a master of geography for children. So he used to design this sort of map that would was dissecting, was possible to dissect a little bit along the line of coast or along the line of mountains in order to teach geography <coughs> to the children. And so there was this sort of relationship between line in design and landscape in geography. And at the same time, we were suggesting this idea about a space uh, that could be just in the corner dedicated for the competition, or it could be a project able to colonize uh, all the outdoor of the museum uh, from Zaha Mirza. And then this, this was the maquette we proposed then with uh, this sort of uh, uh, <coughs> islands able to be moved uh, on this space. And this was the the image is presented. This is the construction site uh, during uh, the, the period of construction with the foundation is true. And then the earth covering the straw. And the platform, there was platform realized with the uh, techni techniques from TV scenography with the block, uh, with the uh, wheels from the TV scenography and blocks by uh, camions uh, techniques with EPS to uh, uh, light the load of the earth. Puzzle, the graph, opening the puzzle, with the sofa puzzle and this sort of cyborg flowers giving the shadows during the day and giving the light during the night. <coughs> Everything was proto prototyped also here. And then there was this idea how to use uh, uh, the iconic design of the flower to suggest uh, urban passage using the maxi uh, sorry the maxi uh, to connect two sides of the city. This side, the residential side, <coughs> the museum side here with the buildings, here that's the Rastrogano building, and then that's uh, the facilities from uh, the uh, Olympic Games on Saturday. So, uh, using the iconic image of our architectural design to suggest a new passage, it was the retro passage of uh, the existing museum that the people resting during the sun, time in summer. And it was the image we proposed during the competition. The image of the organization, the day before the, the opening, and then using the scale, the, using the game of scale, referring the hill to the scale of the building, the museum, and the scale of the museum refers to the scale of the buildings for residential. And the scale of the flowers to the scale of the <coughs> people, the scale of the workers to the scale of the people. How the workers <laughs> use it during the <laughs> Midday, <coughs> how the children use it during sun, uh, summertime, uh, the little square on the top of the hill, the benches, and then 
we were using uh, the money, public money for installation, to create something to be dismantled in uh, three months. Then, of course, uh, it was a successful design. They decided to extend the time uh, of the installation for another three months. But anyway, we used a lot of public money just for six months. If there were 150 thousand euros, so less or more one thousand seven seventy thousand dollars, less or more. And so how to use at the maximum possibility this money to create a playground usable 20 hours uh, per day? And so how to use forms to improve sociability in a public space? This was the axonometry we submit in the competition. And using different uses, benches to sit, to rest, a pool for, people, for young people, or islands for uh, uh, some bedding. And at the same time, the reference was still the imaginary about later and precises, a very famous uh, uh, photo by Enrique Chiepresson, the family taking a rest on the side of the river, and how the people use this place, or uh, the Le Corbusier Chaiselong cut it into the hill, the section of the hill, for the islands used for the rest during the visit of the museum. I don't remember the name of this photographer, uh, this is how the children use the pool for some time. And other images from the children, and during the night, uh, how the young people coming down from the wharf uh, use this place to take a rest, to drink a beer, or to smoke a joint. <laughs> Then, so how uh, uh, this is uh, it's a strange chart because it was uh, transform a, a building for uh, a commercial building for carpet into a commercial building for fashion. And um, it is in the center of a little square nearby, a little city nearby Rome, named uh, name Latina. And it is within a classical metaphysical dechirico urban block city. A city in brick, a brick city. So there was a sort of joke to investigate the capability of the brick in order to fit a frames, a cotton wall. For instance, this is an image from the Afonso Reidi public building for residential in Rio de Janeiro. This one, this is a farm in Tuscany, a farm in Tuscany. Uh, this is uh, a Brazilian, uh, this is still a Brazilian part of a uh, Fontorelli building, or this is the Casbah uh, of Tuzur uh, in Tunisia. And at the same time, to use uh, the capability of the cotton wall, uh, the brick, not used in this way, but just in this way, to allow the light uh, passing through the screen uh, of bricks. And this is, it was the model we committed the client with the brick a block and the, uh, our building with the brick block working with the continuity of material. So it is a sort of tabula rasa about the existing building, but it is a sort of continuity with uh, the material, the, the colors, uh, the height, 
of the block in order to create to work with the urban condition and not to work with our uh, firm object. And I said this, this was the reaction. Oh, okay. And this building was open just a few <coughs> windows able to be a sort of kaleidoscope, able to narrow about the monumental part of the city to a sort of uh, frame creating a uh, site on the city itself. So the building was fashion and trade activities, but that is a path to come about <coughs> the city where the building is. The main cathedral. And then there was the issue how to bring light within this building because it was 30 meters facade with 45 meters deep. So just one facade with three blind uh, uh, walls. So how to bring uh, light from top and how to perceive the sky from, uh, from the ground floor. Uh, so this was one of the images with effect to submit to the client. So don't produce render, the render we produce later. It was terrible. It was a very nice uh, image. So finally, maybe the last project, you are tired of it, I think. It was a daycare center for disabled children. It was a competition. We arrived finally 300 films uh, um, uh, <laughs> concurring to this project. This is the condition in Europe usually. Yeah? Two phases to uh, talk uh, offices invite, no, 10. Ten offices invited uh, to the second phase. <coughs> and we wanted to the border. And it was the condition. The financial area of Milan with a big park in the middle. And this is the area for the disabled children in between three towers just aside of a highway. So this is the side with the sketch story that's just in front of it. And we decided to work on the idea of release, the release of the disappeared city. So a sort of uh, strange uh, blue ceramic uh, relief with uh, dismantled uh, roof suspended into the towers. And then uh, <coughs> building perceivable from the park just from the design of the roof to present just a very little tiny building between the towers. And it was the image of a building with a, a, a complete uh, removable fence able to be open to the park to have uh, three activities in between the daycare center for children and the park activities. And it, it was the first reflection about the capability of uh, the fence, of the border, and along the side of the tower, a sort of fake urban uh, skyline able to host uh, the theater, or able to host uh, plants or uh, benches to see. The, uh, the plan was predetermined. So we, we have to build up the buildings within this profile. And there was five meters from the border to use <coughs> for the outside activities. So we decided to work with the uh, uh, scientists of a pedagogical approach to create a sensory tunnel where in every step uh, designed by every color you could use a different capabilities for the children in order to create equality between the children. So if you cannot hear, you paint the side. If you can touch, 
you can you can use the smell and so on. And in every place, the children could be equal, and they could play with the same uh, capability. Uh, there was uh, different stations, the sensory station for smelling, or uh, the sand uh, pool, or the wind uh, organ, or uh, the rock for uh, uh, this surface uh, where the children could roll on uh, athletic uh, asphalt. <coughs> and it was a system of uh, design with uh, four different rooms where every room uh, had its own specific design until the uh, graphic science uh, working with uh, the graphic designers and they own uh, furniture. So this is sort of pelican thing about the room of water with uh, a lavatory uh, we are able to use the, the wooden games of the children. And okay, the shelters for the light. And then the strip on the roof for uh, a playtime in the roof. A, a, a controlled playtime with the children, with the uh, uh, educators within uh, a clearly fenced space, organized with different. Uh, uh, areas for uh, games like uh, the sensory tunnel, and finally the image of the roof facing the tower. So maybe we can stop here. <coughs> you you want? I don't know. It's a, how much I'm speaking? It's too much. <laughs> okay. Okay. I uh, a project if you want. It is a competition. Uh, two two hundred and ninety-two participants, two faces, are right finally. We don't did one, but we were invited to the Italian Pavilion at Biennale with this project. And it was uh, the extension for a winery. And it was uh, in a in a valley producing uh, Prosecco. Uh, it, it, it is uh, a protected valley by the uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Monuments. And uh, we decided to work on, on, to work on the geographic lines uh, of the mountain in order to create the extension of the valley of the winery as a geographic terra able to front up the territory and to work with the line on the top of the mountain, the middle line of the mountain and the valley. And this is uh, the sign of the slope where the building is sort of terrace, looking at the mountains in front of the valley and hosting in the <coughs> stomach the, the binary. And the old winery was here, and this is the stage. And all the building was made in uh, GLC. This is a glass reinforced concrete. It's a sort of uh, one centimeter thick uh, facade, able to uh, be completely opened to let this big. Uh, window <coughs> facing the mountain. And this is the uh, uh, main space to taste the wine with uh, these images for parties at home, like this. You have to be fair, must stop. We need the book to be away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no? We are not to disturb people. You can keep going. No, 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 no. So, that. There are some of examples how we through through the project in the hospice try every time to uh, take a sort of love, love and history with the different sites, sometimes geographical sites, 
sometimes uh, uh, old uh, uh, buildings to restore, sometimes uh, public square, sometimes buildings set in, uh, within an urban condition. So maybe, I don't, I don't know, I hope I was able to recollect the first uh, thinking to, to the project. Uh, ideas. 
talking, drawing, and joking, and so on. But with all this material prepared, so through the word and aesthetic approach. Because maybe you think you have a wonderful geni genius idea, and it has been realized uh, several times by other architects uh, uh, before you. So <coughs> learning from the work of the other architects and for other designers. So this is the way we usually from Spatial history, architecture history, art history. 
political history, history. They understand the importance of knowing their history and knowing others' history. Am I wrong, Jeff? It's, it's, right? And so when he starts talking about his approach to sight and history, he's talking about it as a profoundly comprehensive thing. It is not the American kind of restoration or preservation history of the thing itself, although it can be that. It is not merely, and again, just stop me when I get it completely wrong. It is not merely, it is not merely the response to sight, because every student here, when they're designing a project, is asked by their teacher, you know, to respond to the site, right? 301 students are doing it right now. Right, this is crucial. We've been doing it since you started architecture uh, classes. It's not merely a response to the site, but it is an interrogation of the history, of the site, of the surrounding. And that interrogation, for me, is deep, it's profound. They also determine the margins at which it stops. Right, history is not obvious. It has to be discussed. It has to be determined. Is that fair? Yeah. No, and I just so his, his approach to it comes from a very rich Italian tradition. <coughs> and I'm only saying this for the students here because yes, this is really a fantastic way to understand history of the site and how we approach it. Now, I'm sorry, Arvid. Can you repeat? You yeah, wanted to summarize his approach seems, uh, to preservation. It seems the design, the design idea behind it was always uh, to sort of complement or to uh, not compete with. Is that true? I mean, do you have a do you have an attitude that you always that carries through from project to project when you're dealing with historic fabric? Well. Started from the, some reflection from Deborah to arrive to uh, the question, because maybe I was not so clear in the first part of uh, the community. Um, what do you think is important now is a big contribute that the Italian school can uh, give in this moment is that we, we have built up a lot in the world. You have to think about the growth in Europe after the Second World War in the 70s, 50s, 70s, 60s, and 70s. The growth of the cities or the growth of uh, American uh, cities, too. I think what's happened in California, for instance, and the images of Silicon Valley <coughs> from the early 20th century till now, just in the century. The colonized Ulu Valley, for instance, or uh, the growth of uh, some uh, Sao Paulo in Brazil, or uh, Manila in the Philippines, or uh, Mexico City, or the growth of China in the last 15 years, or the arrival point of ja Japan, where uh, a nuclear power station is in the center of an uh, urban residential system. So uh, uh, all the offices in the world, uh, starting from uh, Rancoulas and the others, started to think again about preservation. That does not mean to restore everything <coughs> where they, where the building was, uh, or for the function that the building was cut. But how to use the existing material we have built up to realize new urban conditions, to not consume other soil on the earth, for instance. So adding or densifying the existing cities or transforming the existing cities. So the main contribute that the existing the design school can give as Deborah was suggesting, is to work with existing territory, territory like a site, different sites, coming from the history, coming from different eras, where maybe some of them are significant because they are coming from a, 
pop culture of the 20th century, or maybe from an Arab culture from the 17th century, or maybe from medieval time from 11th century. But how to recognize if and select the history? Because the history is a problem of selection. It's a problem of forgetting. With Bethany, I don't know where he is, where is she? The history is a, a complete problem of forgetting. How to forget the rest of the history, select what is interesting for nowadays life, and how to design uh, in, in a relationship with the site. Then we can work uh, like uh, Kulas, where the site is a data uh, object able to uh, work with. Or we can work in continuity like uh, the Roman school approach. Or we can work in opposition like the Milan school approach from the BPR. Or uh, like uh, Aldo Rossi approach, abstracting the, the shapes, giving off decoration, and just uh, uh, using pure uh, forms. But maybe the nowadays we, we have a rich heritage from the architects from the 20th uh, century in Italy could be useful to front of uh, uh, the, top, the problem of the site within the globalization. It's one of the possible ways. And it, has, it is very deep, because uh, we stratified a lot of research and the theories about it. Then, that is a specific, a specific pedagogical approach to education that comes from uh, Benedetto Croce, which is a philosopher I hate, but anyway, he was able to suggest that. It was a long time ago. A long time ago, but Very important. anyway, he was able to suggest a good educational approach using the history to suggest cri criticism in education, to support criticism in education. Criticism is important because if we know history, the history of the place, we are able to select the, the part of the place we want to use with, work with. But if you think also, if you are going to, if you are claimed by the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs to take part in competitions to design the ambassador of the Cultural Institute, you have to know about history. Co and you have to know about politics. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, think about if you are claimed by a private um, owner who wants to realize a, a private foundation for us, for instance for a private museum for uh, its collection, for the collection of foundation. What is the building? The building is the representation of the power of this foundation to the rest of the city. So it's the way this foundation is going to present itself to the rest of the city. So it is a political public sector. And then you have to organize the path of the program the organization, the function. And it is, it is a sort of political program. So when uh, Leo Battista Alberti uh, talks to the prince uh, in the 10 books of architecture, he says, OK, the worker aside, because the worker prevails, you are the prince of the kingdom, and you have because the prince in the Renaissance uh, takes the power upon the republic, so the workers uh, had power during the Republic period in the medieval time, but not anymore during the, the kingdom of the princes during the Renaissance. So, <coughs> architecture is also taking part with the city. So, if you design <laughs> adventures with places for the house, maybe you cannot uh, lay and sleep, but you can just stay. <coughs> sit down, and if you design something comfortable, maybe you can stay, you can sit down there 
for one hour, and if the seat is not uh, comfortable, just tell me. So you decide if the, if the people just sit and pass through, and if the, if the people sit at 10 minutes, 30 minutes, or one hour. And maybe if you are comfortable for one hour, and this bench is quite large, maybe there are another people just aside of you, and maybe you start to speak. So we have a role also in uh, uh, the design of our cities. And so we use history, we use political uh, uh, topics, environment topics. We have a sort of responsibility. So if you, uh, I have a friend, he's a writer, and he, he, he writes novels. And he told me, I studied uh, political sciences. Because we are very cynic, I, I think that the second cynic uh, school is architecture. Because you decide how to place power, facilities, supplies within the city, and you decide. <coughs> it's not completely true, because uh, <laughs> politics decide and you transform. But anyway, it's interesting how to combine the request of private or public uh, uh, clients in order to create uh, nowadays uh, life. 